Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. In today's data culture video, we are going to wrap up this series. We're going to do a review and see what we've talked about in the 16 videos that brought us to this point. Let's take a look. All right. This is the final video that I have planned for the BI Polar series on data culture. I assume that there will be more data culture videos that follow, and please let me know in the comments below what you think, what topics you'd like to see covered, either additional topics or topics that will be covered or that you'd like to see covered in greater depth. But for this video, I want to sort of tie things up and to put into context what we've discussed in the 16 videos before this. We started off by defining some of the foundational topics. We defined what a data culture was. We put it in the context of cultures in general and in digital transformation. We talked about the importance of executive sponsorship and how a culture, the scope of the culture is defined by the authority of the executive sponsor that is driving it and that has a true stake in the success of the culture. And we also introduced a brief history of business intelligence to put into context how traditional BI, self-service BI, and managed self-service BI each provide solutions and introduce new problems that a data culture will need to take into consideration. We also talked about some strategic topics for a data culture. We talked about the roles and responsibilities between IT stakeholders and business stakeholders and how they need to work in partnership with clearly defined expectations for each contributing to the goals of the culture. We talked about how you need to pick your battle so you can't manage everything completely. You can't leave everything uh, open and fully self-service. You need to understand what's important to the data culture and to the organization and to uh, effectively use that information to structure how you work with what data in what ways. We also emphasize the importance of having both a center of excellence and a broader community and that that community is the place where the data culture takes shape it's where you encourage more people to do more of the right things with more of the right data and to drive towards the goals that you've set for the data culture. Beyond these strategic ideas, we looked at some things that were a little bit more tactical. We looked at the importance of training to make sure that people understand both how to work with the tools and how to work with the right data in the right way. We talked about the art of the possible as a way to frame how people can use tools and how people can use data to achieve their goals, recognizing that not everyone is coming from the same position, not everyone may know what is possible for them to do. We talked about having a central portal as the location for the training information, for all of the resources that we make available for this community, and we talked about how important it is to make stakeholder buy-in explicit so that everyone who's contributing understands that what they're doing is important and valuable. We looked at how a successful data culture will identify and recognize and reward champions, sort of building the people in the community to help them do more and to serve as a showcase for others, but also the importance of having experts, these deeply technical professionals that form the core of our center of excellence because you can't deliver on enterprise goals unless you have enterprise class talent to work with. We also then looked at uh, some closing topics. So in the last few videos, we looked at how some organizations will measure success and the importance of measuring success in general. And we looked at some, some timely or timeless wisdom from Sun Tzu on the importance of strategy and on having strategic goals that are defined explicitly in advance so that our tactical ongoing actions will be aligning us towards success and not simply being noise for the sake of making noise.
Oh, that was kind of awkward. You see, a lot of this series was recorded when I took a vacation week back in August, and I've been uh, editing and publishing and writing the blog posts to accompany the videos in the weeks and months since then. But as I was preparing to do the final editing for this video, I actually found that of the three clips that I recorded, the third and final one had been corrupted. So now I need to look back and see what was it that past Matthew wanted to say to wrap up this series. And fortunately, it's an opportunity that I can use to put my own eh, October, late October 2020 spin on the topic. Let's see where we actually wrap things up from here. One of the interesting things for me about this series is that even though we've provided both strategic and tactical guidance for building a data culture, at no point did we actually provide a process to follow or specific steps that everyone must do. And one of the reasons for this is not only does everyone have a different destination in mind, those strategic goals and the strategic end state that you will define and work towards will be unique for you and your organization, but at the same time, every organization is going to have a different starting point in different terrain that needs to be overcome. Now, if you think about this like a, a pirate's treasure map, this is the best uh, free graphic that I could find to illustrate this. Very often, there is an X that's marked on the map. This is where the treasure is. This is the goal that you're working towards. But because everyone is coming from a different direction, everyone has a different starting point, everyone will find a different point to land on the island, it's very difficult to provide any specific guidance to say this is exactly how you get here. And if I were to provide guidance to say, do this thing first and then do this thing next, it could be that for your situation, it wouldn't make sense and I would actually be slowing you down. So let's not do that. Another important point to keep in mind as you're moving forward with defining and building your data culture is that every culture changes over time. Sometimes this is a short-term dramatic or rapid change. Uh, more often it is a longer-term slow pace of change. But every organization will change over time, responding to different markets, responding to just changes in the world, as well as the changes in the strategic goals that are being set. And as you keep this in mind, understand that the work that you're doing today, the steps that you and your team and your organization are taking today to define and grow a data culture, that what you're doing is defining the foundation. You're not doing all of the work today because no matter where you are or even how far ahead you are on your journey, there's no way today to understand how the requirements and the landscape will change over time because over time, every organization will grow and evolve and the data culture will need to grow and evolve to keep up with that pace of change and with the organization's evolving needs. And at this point, it's my time to say thank you because over the year, remember that we started this back in January, it's currently November, we had some, uh, some stops and starts, but over the year, I've gotten so much positive feedback and so much guidance and encouragement. Uh, I am overwhelmed with how many people have gotten value from and provided feedback on these videos and the blog posts that accompany them. This is sort of a niche topic, at least in the Power BI world. So everyone who has provided comments, who's joined the premieres for these videos, I can't overstate how valuable this is and how uh, I have been motivated and encouraged by your feedback. So thank you very, very much for that. And I'd also like to mention that even though this is the end of season one for our series on data culture, there will definitely be additional videos that follow. Over the past few months, I've gotten a lot of questions and suggestions. Uh, please put your additional questions and suggestions for a second series into the comments below. 
uh, in calendar year 2021. I expect to pick up with a season two. I don't know exactly what it will look like or when those videos will come, but over the end of year break, I am planning on taking some time to both script or plan and record uh, some season two videos. So please do keep your suggestions coming. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who has uh, made this series what it is. We'll see you the next time. It won't be next week, but we'll see you as season two begins. Thanks very much. Take care.